Crash diets are the 21st century way to lose weight. Despite their bad reputation, the latest scientific research suggests that you can keep the weight off after a crash diet just as successfully as on a normal diet. 40% of us admit to crash dieting. Diet is called Lipotrim. Have a soup and bovril diet. HCG diet. It's a Cambridge diet. Don't eat anything at all diet. We're suffering the hell of hunger. I'm hungry. I've got a headache and shocking side effects. If you feel that you want to break wind, don't. This is advice for not to have any sex during the diet. Or in the pursuit of a skinnier figure. Oh, don't do that. And even though crash diets are potentially deadly, when it comes to our weight, we just don't care. I know the pros and cons. I know the risk I'm going to take. If I want to take it, I'll take it. We're going to put six of the most popular crash diets under the microscope. Tonight is the cabbage soup diet, the maple syrup diet, and the Cambridge weight plan. We'll find out if by following one of them, you could lose those extra pounds. And we'll explore the potential health risks to find out if your crash diet really could kill you. Recent scientific research suggests that done properly, crash diets can be a great way to kickstart long-term weight loss. I used to be nearly 26 stone, and I lost over 15 stone. It took me eight months to lose seven stone. I've lost seven stone in a year and a half. When I felt these love handles, I thought, I've got to do something about it. They can work, but there have been claims they can kill. Is there a way to crash diet safely? Dr Anu Bhartia is going to help us sort out the no wheat from the zero chaff. In the surgery, everyone calls me the diet doctor and I've got loads of women who come and see me um, about weight loss. To get a sense of the scale of the crash diet phenomenon and to answer some of your crash diet questions, Dr Anu hit the high street. I hate this, I love this. Yeah, I hate the bingo wings, but more, I really, really want to get rid of my chin. I just want to know, how do I keep the weight off? You say that you diet and they work. They do in terms of weight loss. But, but quite is, clearly looking yeah. at you, they don't. I can't keep the weight off. I've never been able to keep the weight off. Now, you say you're 52 and you've been like this your whole life. Well, it's time to make a change. It is, isn't it? Yes, it is. You need to include carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats. Yes. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach, so cut down your portion size. Now, mm. if that means using a saucer yeah. instead of your dinner plate, yeah. go for it. and I've been a diet most of my life and I hope the doctor can sort me out. These are the bits and bobs I don't like. They sag and droop along with my bum. Where do you need to lose weight? A little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit under, under arms. Sorry, so a little bit here? Yeah. Okay. I can feel your ribs. Yeah? Yeah. Let me have a look at your arms. They sag a tad. That skin. What size are you? A size six. Have you always been on a diet? I've been on a diet all my life. You're tiny. One of your diets you said was the vegetarian diet. Uh -huh. What was that? Uh, it was a lot of spinaches and um, a little bit of you know carrots and tomatoes. So it was just vegetables? Yeah, basically. For how long? Uh, about a year. Oh my god. Yeah. Did you have to carry around some toilet bowl? Because you must have been on the toilet a long time. I spent a lot of time on the toilet because it goes right through your body. Absolutely. Yeah. To be honest with you, with what you're doing to your body, you know, you're putting it into a starvation at times, your skin's going to look, start looking sallow, mm -hmm. your hair's going to get all brittle, you're going to feel faint, you're going to feel dizzy, mm -hmm. and at some point you need to look at yourself and really appreciate what you have and what you've got, which in my opinion is gorgeous. Tonight we're following three crash dieters also desperate to shed the pounds that they're plunging way below the recommended 2,000 calories a day for women, to and a half thousand for men. First up is civil servant Jackie from London. She spends all day in the office, but in her free time, she's mad about dancing. It's part of my life, it's part of me, it's my passion to be quite honest, dance. One of the things about when I do dance classes, of course, I've got a big mirror. And then you look to the left, you look to the right, you've got these skinny minis. You know, usually I am the biggest person in the class. So, you know, not that I feel conscious, but I, I know within myself where I want to be with my shape. It just makes it feel harder to move. And once I get rid of that, I will feel a lot lighter and I feel better about my dance as well. Jackie's going to be replacing her normal food with the maple syrup diet. 
dreamed up by an alternative health practitioner as a detox in the 1940s. Every day, Jackie will be drinking eight to nine glasses of water mixed with a syrup made from maple and palm trees, lemon juice and cane pepper, totaling just 900 calories a day. It takes a lot of willpower. Absolutely no solid food will pass Jackie's lips for at least 10 days and it'll cost her around 35 pounds a week. Fans of the diet who famously include superstar Beyonce claim it's the fastest way to a bootalicious figure and that by following it, you'll end up pounds lighter, healthier and brimming with happiness. Our second crash dieter is Nicola from Manchester. I've never been a massage that I want to be. I started putting the weight on when mum and dad got divorced when I was like six or seven. I've just progressed as I got older, got bigger and bigger and bigger. Grew up playing football, but then I just put weight on. I've lost my place in the team um, because somebody's come along that's fitter than me. My passing's good, but I just couldn't keep up. So your goal is to get your place back? Yeah, that's why I know I'll do it. Nicola's pinning her hopes on the Cambridge Weight Plan, devised by a professor of nutrition at Cambridge University. All she'll be eating is the plant's own range of shakes, fruit bars and soups, claimed to provide all essential nutrients, letting Nicola keep her calories down to a meagre 615 a day. The Cambridge Weight Plan recommends keeping this up for 12 weeks and the products cost around £40 a week. Tonight's final crash dieter is Angelica from Merseyside. I used to be a glam model, but now I've gone into the fashion. Plus size. I've always been a plus size and I'll always be a plus size. But I don't feel me anymore. I want to get my career back and it's for me. This was about four years ago. I look from my own eyes really out there. Glamorous. Everything that I'm actually not today. I want to be that girl again. And the only thing that's stopping me is my weight. Angelica's replacing all her usual food with the cabbage soup diet, which first appeared in the 1950s. She gets to eat unlimited cabbage soup, plus either fruit, veg, meat or milk, depending on the day of the week, all adding up to around 900 calories a day. It's designed as a seven-day plan to help achieve rapid weight loss. Angelica reckons it will cost her around £20 a week. So those are our runners and riders, three crash dieters, turning their back on everyday food to lose weight fast. But just how much do they hope to lose? I'm a size 18 now, and with the month, I will be a size 14. I'm dress size 22, my goal's a size 12. I'm currently a size 18, and I want to be down to a size 14. Our girls are not alone in going for it on a crash diet. One recent study found that in a single year, an astonishing 86% of women between 25 and 45 had tried one. People will go to extreme lengths to lose weight, even wrapping themselves up like a piece of meat. When I was younger, I was wrapped in cling film and I lost weight. It's not unheard of where people get wrapped up and their body temperature rises, and then afterwards, when, they, when it's all sort of taken off, you can visibly lose at least an inch or so, but you've literally just lost sort of superficial sort of skin water, and within hours, it all comes back on. OK, so I wouldn't advocate that. The early days of a crash diet are always tough. Our three crash dieters are at the start of a gruelling journey. In London, Jack is three days into her diet and mixing up her cocktail of maple syrup, lemon juice and cane pepper. She's planning to consume nothing but this sugary syrup for the next two weeks. Cake tastes quite nice. It's quite refreshing because of the lemon in it. Now what I might do, I might just put a little bit more of um, the syrup in it because it tastes a little bit too watery. So I'm just going to add a little bit more, not a lot more. I don't want it too sweet. The maple syrup diet claims that if you keep sipping the drink throughout the day, it'll keep your sugar levels topped up just enough to keep you going. You'll feel hungry, but your energy levels will be just sufficient to get you through the day. And for fans of the diet, the belief that the mixture is detoxifying their body is a strong psychological motivator. 
In Manchester, the recipe for Nicola's ultra-low-calorie shakes is simple. Buy one sachet from your weight plan representative, cost approximately £1.90, mix with water and tuck in. It's room meal replacement diet. It's nice. Well, three replacements a day, I have the shakes. They call it a VLCD, very low calorie diet. Um, so it's, yeah, very restrictive. The Cambridge Weight Plan doesn't make any specific claims as to how much weight you can lose, but they do say that their bars, soups and shakes contain the right amount of protein to protect lean tissue, carbohydrates to stave off hunger pangs, and the right levels of nutrients and vitamins to maintain good health. And in Merseyside, Angelica might just be boiling vegetables up with a stock cube, but it hasn't dampened her enthusiasm. Move over, Jamie Oliver, Angela. <laughs> I'm going to aim to have about six, seven balls in a day. The liquids fill your stomach, triggering your stretch receptor to send messages to your brain telling you you're full. And also, the fibrous soup takes longer to digest, keeping you fuller for longer. Mmm, oh, that is really, really nice. It's really, really tasteful. Next on the menu... The effect of doing the maple syrup diet is that you get a furry tongue, so your tongue goes white. Crash diet side effects uncovered. If you feel that you want to break wind, don't until you've been to the toilet. And we experience the highs and lows of crash dieting. You look great, Nick. Thanks. If you carry on like this, you're going to die. With Britons getting ever fatter, it's not surprising we're all desperate for a quick fix. And it seems we'll try anything to shift the pounds. I lost five stone with Lighter Life. I did Weight Watchers when I was 14. I've done Slimming World, I've done Slim Fast. I swear by my aloe vera diet. I've had my teeth white twice. Despite mounting evidence that crash diets work, some scientists are still skeptical as to how long the effects will last. While others believe if you're morbidly obese, crash dieting is better than doing nothing. We are following three women who hope a crash diet will launch them into long-term weight loss. On Jackie's maple syrup diet, all you're allowed to consume is water mixed with maple syrup, lemon juice and cane pepper. Fans of the diet claim it leaves you not just thinner, but happier, healthier and full of energy. And Jackie's putting the theory to the test with a high-energy workout at her beloved dance school. I'm back to do the dance class. I mean, even though I haven't eaten, I think I'll be OK. A bit knackered at the moment. I think I need to get loads of fluids down there. But while Jackie works out, her body's fast burning up its instant access energy, the sugar in her blood. Ooh, 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 no. Fast, fast, and she's struggling with the pace. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It's my brain, it's not functioning at the moment. Difficulty concentrating can be a warning sign of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar and it can eventually lead to loss of consciousness. At the very least, it will leave you feeling exhausted. It's like you're trying to find the energy to actually push it, the dance routine out. Now, when I go home tonight, I have to go to bed earlier just to rejuvenate, because if not, I'm just going to burn myself out. Despite all the pain, we can't get enough of crash diets, as Dr Anu's seen out on the street. I'm a yo-yo dieter. I've been between 24 stone and 14 stone at various points over the last 10 years. What do you think around your heart? Is it kind of like smearing it with lard? Precisely. Mm. How old are you? 37. By putting on weight so rapidly and losing weight rapidly, you are having a huge effect on your body. You're going to damage your heart muscle. You're going to have heart muscle and that's covered in fat, and then you're going to deprive your heart and your muscles and the rest of your body of essential vitamins, minerals and calories. I mean, quite frankly, if you stay like this, you're going to have a heart attack. Right. And I don't think you're going to make 60. Can you name the date? 
Is it going to make it easier for my payment protection insurance? Listen, David, we've got to be serious here. I mean, I know that you've probably got this sort of jovial personality, and that's fine. It's all fun. But quite frankly, I think you're in denial. And I think if you carry on like this, you're going to die. If you're trying to lose weight, short-term goals could keep you on the straight and narrow. A trick Footy Mad Nicola is hoping will help her stick to the Cambridge weight plan. OK, this is the um, football jacket that I've got that's got to, you've got to wear it or you get fined for a football game. I've taken myself out for a month. I've told them I'm not around for a month um, because when I go back, I want to be wearing that jacket zipped up. I want to kind of go back and then be like, oh, you've lost weight. That's my aim, um, to prove that I want my place back. But while small goals can help you through, they can't prevent nasty side effects, as cabbage soup dieter Angelica's been finding out after just a few days. The most side effects is the passing the wind all the time. The sign up with deadly ones. Well, you can blame on the dog, but I haven't got a dog. <laughs> Flatulence is almost always guaranteed with this type of crash diet. And that's because cabbage is full of indigestible fibre. So instead of being broken down in the intestines, it actually ferments in the gut to produce the antisocial methane gas. Otherwise known as... I think I need to uh, have a lodger for a week so I can blame the lodger. <laughs> But Angelica's not going to let a little wind ruin her career plans. I'm doing a casting for an underwear company. If I got the job, it'd mean a hell of a lot to my... This is the outfit that I've decided to wear today for the casting. This is the one I was going to wear, which was a bit too revealing, so I thought, I better not. <laughs> I don't think my confidence is there fully yet. If you're after a quick confidence boost, the cabbage soup diet claims you can lose 10 pounds in just one week. The cabbage soup diet is devised to last only seven days. You eat cabbage soup throughout the diet, but you're also supposed to eat certain foods on certain days to stop getting malnourished. So as well as cabbage soup, on day five you can eat meat and tomatoes, and on day seven, brown rice and fruit juice. And Angelica's convinced it's working. I've got the small, if you look from the side, you can see how, how small my waist is. And if I go like that, ah, it stands straight. It goes in. So I've got the smallest waist, and that's where I've been losing the weight. Whether it's the diet or whether it's the underwear, Angelica's giving it her best shot. Oh, wish me luck. <laughs> doing well, really good. You're yeah, looking good, though. Good, lovely. Three, two, one. Nice bit of confidence there. Doing wonderfully well. Good, excellent. Perfect. Thank you very much. When I do this again, it's going to be these, not this. The cabbage soup diet is one for self-sufficient crashes. Find the recipe online and off you go. But for those who prefer a little more help, there's a whole industry built around holding your hand. On the Cambridge weight plan, that means a weekly catch-up with a personal consultant. Nicola spends around £40 a week on products she buys direct from Glen, but advice and support comes at no extra cost. Obviously, you know about any of the side effects that might happen with mm -hmm. your tummy, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And obviously, if you do have any problems, just take a couple of laxatives. Right. Don't let it build up. Right. There is obviously the other side effect that you can go the opposite way for being um, constipated, mm -hmm. you can get a touch of diarrhea. Okay. All I'm going to warn you is, if you feel that you want to break wind, don't yeah. until you've been to the toilet. Okay. <laughs> because it can happen that quick and can be quite embarrassing. <laughs> I'll take note of that one. <laughs> and it is like as that. quick as that, yeah. Okay. yeah. And when you've been on the diet for a while, mm -hmm. you can experience hair loss. Mm. It is only temporary right. and it doesn't come out in great big chunks and, leaves you, and leave you bald. Unfortunately for crash dieters, hair growth is one of the least essential body functions. Mild thinning is probably temporary, but with serious cases like this, you should see your GP. But for now, Nicola's still settling into her new regime. Day two was, was a bad day in terms of 
hunger, but this kind of matches, if not exceeds it. You probably would have just been going into Key's house, sis, okay. yes. So that will explain why you're feeling a little bit hungry today. Right. Is it a headache as well? Is that part of it? That's part of it, yeah, okay. the headache. As you know, it, it will be the carbohydrate withdrawal. Right. Ketosis happens when the carbohydrate stores are empty and you start burning fat. This releases ketones, acidic chemicals which your body expels in your urine and through your lungs. These can make your breath pong. But if you get nauseous, have stomach pain or develop a fever, you should get to the doctor. You could have developed ketoacidosis, a dangerous buildup of ketones, which can be life-threatening. On the Cambridge weight plan, Glenn's role is to stay in close touch and make sure Nicola is A-OK. -okay. She's recording Nicola's progress in minute detail, including the dreaded weigh-in. Will the scales be friend or foe? So, are you going to climb aboard? OK. Well, you're being very brave because you're actually looking at the scales as well. No, yes. I'll see the damage. You are. Okay, the head climb off. 18.10. OK. Yeah? Yeah, and I'm ha actually happy at that because it's not in the 19s. Yeah. So it's, I'm quite happy at that. Yeah. That it's psychologically, I've, I'm out of that stone bracket. You're out now. of it and back down. Yeah. And by the time you come to me next week, if you stick to this, there is no reason whatsoever why that can't be two zeros on the end of that 18. Really? If she keeps going like this, the pain could be worth it. In Merseyside, Angelica is also facing the music. Is her cabbage soup diet doing its job? 94.9 now. 94.9 kilos? That's nearly 15 stone. Eh? You don't know what? What it's saying is, is, since I've been on the cabbage soup diet, I've put over a stone on. Do I look like I've put a stone on? It's a devastating result for Angelica. So what are you going to do now? I'm going to phone the doctors and see what's going on. Appointment at 8.30 a.m. I just feel now, like, what's the point? Do you know what I mean? I really do feel like, what's the point? To be fair, I just want to cry. I feel like all my hard work's done for nothing. And that's what I feel like. In London, it's maple syrup dieter Jackie who's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the scales. I'm now on day seven, just started day seven, and I'm weighing 14 stone and eight pound. I've lost seven pound. It's amazing, isn't it? It's, it, it's, it's, it's weird, but yeah, seven pound in seven days of the uh, maple syrup and lemon juice diet, so it's hardcore, but I'm pleased, I'm pleased. On a diet like this, it's possible to lose as much as a pound a day, but much of that can be water. Normally, up to 10 pounds of your body mass is water, stored with your carbohydrate reserves. As your body burns through its supply of carbs, this water is released and is lost. That's why you seem to lose a lot of weight in the early days. And more seriously, this water loss causes dehydration. And to make things worse, instead of winding down, Jack is gearing up for another high-energy dance class. Getting hot and sweaty when you're already dehydrated disturbs the balance of salt in your body, which could cause painful muscle cramps. It's very tiring. I'm just really knackered at the moment. I took a lot out of me. Yeah, more than before. It's no wonder Jack is feeling it, and her body is also showing the strain. Well, the side effect of doing a maple syrup diet is that you get a, a furry tongue, so your tongue goes white, because it's meant to be as it's part of detoxing you, some toxins will obviously come out your tongue and showing your tongue, and you just get a white kind of fur on it. So I have to give that a good brush every morning, you know, to make sure there's no furry bits still there. So most of it's gone. A lot of crash diets can give you a white coating on the tongue, which is a classic sign of dehydration. Now, when you're dehydrated, you have less saliva to wash away the bacterial overgrowth, which naturally builds up on the tongue, giving rise to a furry appearance and also halitosis or bad breath. So how do you avoid those crash diet pitfalls? You've been queuing up at our booth to find out. So I put myself on a diet, a diet which is no 
no bread, no potatoes, no cakes and mm -hmm. no biscuits. So we're talking about low carbs here. I think you've got the right intentions. I mean, the I thing about know. carbs is that some of them are good for you because they slowly release energy into the body so you don't get hungry. So if you can try and introduce some of the, the sort of better carbs, the ones that have pasta, wholemeal pasta, yes. that's brilliant. Rice is good, yeah. wholemeal bread, yeah. because that way yeah. you're going to be releasing energy slowly throughout your body so your, your weight's not going to yo-yo and your sugar levels aren't going to go sort of up and down all the time. And that, I think, would be far more sort of maintainable in the future. Yes. Yes. Angelica's had some good news from her doctor. Although she's gained some weight on the cabbage soup plan, it's just three pounds, nowhere near as much as she feared. My doctor did weigh me, half put three pounds on. Now, he told me off of going on different kind of scales because, to be fair, it wasn't just that time that I've been on scales. I, since going on the scales in my house, I've been on, like, five sets of scales. Doctor knows best. Mixing and matching your scales is a surefire route to weight loss confusion. And if you're experiencing inexplicable weight gain despite your best efforts, don't panic yet. Your weight can fluctuate by up to five pounds during the day. It's always best to weigh yourself first thing in the morning before you've eaten. Now bear in mind, not only the food you eat will make you put on weight, but also the liquids you consume. A pint of water weighs one pound. And there's certainly plenty passing through Angelica's system. Because it's a cabbage soup, when I'm drinking the, the fluids, I pass wind, wee, and do a number two more than what I've ever done before. Do you know? <laughs> it's going to sound wrong, this. It's better than sex sometimes when you've got the toilet, isn't it? You're holding it in for a minute or so. It's better, isn't it, to have it out? In Manchester, Nicholas stuck at the Cambridge plan for six weeks and her dedication's paying off. She can finally slip into her beloved football jacket. When I very first started this, it was always the first thing I wanted. First thing, get the jacket to zip up. Nicola's dropping in on Glossop Ladies Football Club's practice to show the girls. And though she's still far from being match fit, her teammates can already see the difference. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Okay, look really well. Thank you. She's, you know, uh, very enthusiastic about playing football. She's a big part of the atmosphere. And uh, we've not been here for quite a long time, then obviously it makes a difference her coming back. You can tell by the look of her that she's a lot fitter and she's lost a lot of weight. Stiffing her jacket up and she's probably going to be in the same size shirt as everybody else, to be fair. But yeah, everyone's buzzing that she's back. Nicola's made a massive step in the right direction, but she's still nowhere near her size 12 goal. She needs to get a bit of fitness up, but once she's lost the weight, she should, should do that. Next on the menu, more of your crazy crash diet confessions. I'm on the enchilada diet, made up by myself. And the toughest 24 hours in every dieter's calendar. Mm. It's like the last supper. Christmas day. I'm not sure it was worth the bloatedness. Merry Christmas. Recent scientific research suggests that careful crash dieting could be a good way of kick-starting a healthier lifestyle. But do they really work? To find out, we're following three crash dieters attempting to lose serious amounts of weight fast over the toughest time of all, Christmas. In Manchester, football mad Nicola is in week seven of her diet, the 615 calorie a day Cambridge weight plan. And in a bid to speed up her weight loss, she's also hitting the gym hard. Good, come on, we can make it. Up, 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 up. Abs tight, abs tight. Come on, make it, make it, make it. Steve, Nicola's personal trainer, isn't pulling any punches. One, two, and again. Come on, there's one. One, two, three, bang. Yeah, it's good. That was really brutal. I'm out of breath, I've got a stitch. My arms hurt, my legs hurt. It doesn't look much, but I didn't have the energy to do it. Nicola's very low calorie diet means she's used up her easy access energy stores of sugar and carbohydrates. Now her body's having to convert fat to fuel her workout so it's not surprising she's feeling it. I don't understand why you feel you need to follow a really restrictive, calorific diet. The idea was to lose the weight and to get my fitness at the same time. But at what cost to your health? At this weight as I am now, 
the health risks associated with, with it is far outweigh the side effects of a, of a diet like the Cambridge diet, which is kind of how I'm looking at it. It's, it's got the pros and the cons. I just, I really want the weight off. And while I'm so motivated, I want it off. In Merseyside, cabbage soup dieter Angelica is Christmas shopping, but there's only one thing on her mind. I spend about 80-90% to to thinking of food in a day since I've started crush dieting. It's like forbidden fruit. If you're, if you're not allowed to have, to have it, you want it all the more. Despite the temptations of Christmas, so far Angelica has managed to resist falling off the wagon. I've got pies, cheese, cheeses, dips. And if you see, nothing at all has been opened in the fridge. The soup must be filling there because I'm looking in the fridge now and I'm not even tempted. Even in my cupboards, you've got, and still, with the tags on, not open whatsoever. It doesn't bother me. Studies show that turning food into soup is a slimmer's tip that actually works. And that's because the water in the soup adds volume, making the stomach think it's full. Now, on the cabbage soup diet, most of the bulk passes through undigested. So, not only are you feeling full up, you're actually taking in hardly any calories. So will it be cabbage soup for Christmas dinner? I'm going to have some more soup later on, um, but I'm taking a day off tomorrow, hence it's Christmas Day. So I'm going to have a proper dinner for the first time in a few weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm going back on my diet on Sunday. While Angelica's looking forward to Christmas, Nicola's finding it hard to get into the festive spirit. The Cambridge Weight Plan cites euphoria as a possible side effect, but that's not what Nicola's feeling. We're going to be sneaky and try and nip in at the top, do what everybody hates. This is where the anger comes into it. I've not got the patience to sit around when, got, when I'm not eating. <laughs> you know, I get more angry. Low blood sugar could be the culprit. Riding the blood sugar roller coaster plays havoc with your hormones, which can affect your mood. Nicola's been working out in the gym, but exercising hard on any crash diet can be dangerous. And when Nicola told Cambridge HQ, they were not impressed. I had a call from the medical people at Cambridge headquarters. I told them I was doing some exercise, and they wanted to know what kind of exercise I was doing. And when I explained the kind of do, they told me that the pl I shouldn't be on the plan that I'm on. Um, I should be on at least a 1,000 calorie plan, not the 415 to 615 that I'm currently doing. I, d I didn't really understand them, to be honest. There was a lot of medical jargon in there, but something to do with electrolytes and, and things. And um, she mentioned the heart, putting the heart under pressure that it shouldn't be under. And that was the one that got me, because everything else I can do, if it was just a side effect, I'd deal with it. But when you start messing with your organs, it, I, nothing's worth that. If you exercise too much while on a very low calorie diet, like the Cambridge Weight Plan, you could be putting your heart at risk. Electrolytes and minerals are essential for muscle action. And if you exercise too hard while on a crash diet, those electrolytes will fluctuate wildly, throwing your muscles into meltdown. In the worst case scenario, it could affect the most important muscle of all, the heart. It's a real dilemma for Nicola. I feel I've been penalised for wanting to lose weight and get fit. Do I cut my exercise down so I stay on this plan? Or do I carry on the exercise and up my calorie intake? I'm just really confused at the minute. I've no clue which one to, to go with. Nicola's going to stick to her diet but stop exercising while she waits to hear from the experts. Down in London, maple syrup dieter Jackie has also been exercising hard. On Christmas Eve, after two weeks on the maple syrup diet, about as long as it's recommended to do it, Jackie decides to return to proper food. Today's going to be uh, the day where I come off the maple syrup diet, and I'm looking forward to it. Time for one more weigh-in. About 14.4. But when I've got my clothes off, it's 14 too. <laughs> so I'm still happy. I'm still happy with clothes on and clothes off. People say crash diets don't work, but obviously they do. You know, you can get a lot of pounds off. 
you know, in a short space of time. But the work is after you've done the crash diet is keeping that, keeping the uh, the weight up. And most people tend to think, right, I've done the weight, Ooh, I'm happy, I'm looking good. You know, I, I'm gonna eat whatever I want again. And that's that's where you, you know, that's where people go wrong. And I know this time I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say it's gonna come off. Your more's gonna come off. Jack is delighted that her willpower has delivered results. Although her diet's unorthodox, like many crash diets, it does recommend a slow easing off period, crucial to avoid rapid weight gain and unpleasant side effects. You're supposed to come off the maple syrup diet slowly and not eat any solid food for the first two days. This is because your body can't cope with solid food straight away. When you're switching from the maple syrup diet to a normal diet, you'll get constipation and nausea as your body struggles to cope digesting ordinary food. I've got some food. I've got some, not a lot. I've got an orange juice, one fresh orange. Because I know if I get loads, I'll just try and eat them. And I've decided to get some, uh, some soup, just a cup of soup. You went in there, you were only going to get orange juice? Yeah, but I just thought I'd get this lot as well. One trip to the supermarket and Jackie seems to be throwing out the rule book. So I thought I'd do it my way, I'd do it how I feel comfortable. You know, because you know they say to win yourself off over three days, so you don't eat, but it's Christmas tomorrow. And I would have a bit of food. Jackie's not the first crash dieter to invent her own rules, as Dr Anu's discovered. I'm on the enchilada diet, made up by myself. It's about 1,000 to 1,500 calories a day. Just started it and I intend to lose two stone by the end of March. You've created your own diet. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. I prepare this enchilada diet with chicken, shred the carrots, the onions, a couple of bulbs of garlic. And you're having one meal a day? Yes. Right. What time are you having that meal? Between 8 and 10 o'clock at night. When you're going to bed, the rate at which your body breaks down calories really goes down. If you eat late at night, you're more likely to put on weight. You're eating one enchilada a day mm -hmm. and you're exercising. Yes. What happens is your body starts breaking down its muscles yeah. to release energy. Yeah. Please have something to eat, give it a couple of hours, and a then do or something. a banana's good, yeah. something which is going to release energy over a long period of time, and then exercise after a couple of hours. It's Christmas morning, and Angelica's looking forward to a day off cabbage soup. I'm going to have a nice glass of wine now um, to get my celebrations um, together. Alcohol is packed full of calories, but that's not stopping Angelica. Merry Christmas. Oh, that is... Uh... But alcohol isn't the only thing on the menu. What we're doing now is just... Uh... Get the goose fat ready because the potatoes are nicely boiling. A single portion of those goose fat roasties equals 230 calories. That's more than two litres of cabbage soup. Gone. Full bottle of wine. An average bottle of wine contains well over 500 calories. And Angelica's not the only one who's giving herself a Christmas treat. Nicola's also coming off her diet for Christmas. The average Brit consumes 7,000 calories on Christmas Day. That's more than 10 times the daily calorie count of Nicola's diet. It looks a huge plate full, so don't think I'll get through it all, but I'm going to try. And Jackie's maple syrup ease out is turning into more of a blowout. I don't think I'm going to get through all this, but who knows? I might have to come back to it later. But yeah, Merry Christmas! It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Mash, first thing on the plate. It tastes, it tastes good. It's like the last supper. Mm. I've been tempted with a little bit of apple pie. Well worth the wait. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. It's so pleasing when I'm like, I can't. I never had that chubby food before. When you're on a crash diet, your stomach shrinks, so it can't cope with too much food. And that's why you need to come off your crash diet slowly. Now I feel really, really bloated and kind of got a stomach ache. 
so whilst it was really nice I'm not sure it was worth the bloatedness. After almost two months of intense dieting, Nicola is struggling emotionally as well as physically. There has been a lot of stress around the Cambridge diet the last few days, um, kind of not knowing where to go with it. <laughs> this is one of the side effects that I've found on the diet is you just cry at anything. Um, but I have been really stressed and I have been really emotional about it. It's Boxing Day and Angelica is suffering from a touch of morning afters. Bye-bye, chicken. I feel a bit dry mouth and everything this morning. I think that was because of the alcohol I saw yesterday. It does make you a bit dehydrated, so I'm going to drink as much fluid as I possibly can today. And then later on when my friends come round, um, I'm going to have a nice glass of wine with my friends before we hit the town and paint it red. If you drink while on a crash diet, you're asking for trouble. You're already in a state of dehydration and the alcohol is just going to make this worse, giving rise to headaches and nausea. In the long term, if you drink and crash diet, you'll increase the level of acid in your stomach. This could give rise to a stomach ulcer. I've had six drinks, plus the wine in my house. So I feel a little bit tip session with her. Um, but I'm looking forward to my cabbage tomorrow. With the maple syrup diet behind her, Jackie's getting back into her normal routine. After two weeks of fasting, it's important she makes the right choices. A fresh prawn salad, I might go for that. A prawn salad shouldn't cause too many problems. I'm going for the jacket potato with baked beans. But if there's cheese or butter on that potato, Jackie could run into trouble. Her gallbladder will have to kick into action to digest the fat, which can cause sudden intense abdominal pain. I am feeling a bit full at the moment. I definitely I'm going to finish all of it. I know people might think, well, it's a waste of food, but, you know, if I want to get to the goal that I want to reach, then I have to listen to my body, you know, so that's why, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm done. So far, so good for Jackie. But in Manchester, Nicola's had a nasty shock. Head office have doubled her calories to 1,200 a day while they assess what's safe for her level of exercise. The 1,200 plan, as far as I'm aware, is using two of their products and supplementing it with food. For me, the shakes was kind of a weight, quick weight loss thing that only came to 600 calories. What's the point of doing using the Cambridge sachets on 1,200 when I can just go and eat 1,200 calories um, and do it my own way? Next on the menu, we find out exactly how much our crash dieters have lost. Look at me. I'm getting me back. And we compare the three crash diets to find out which works best. What more can I say? We've been following crash dieters Angelica, Jackie and Nicola as they attempt to fight the flab at record speed. Despite all breaking the rules of their diets, they all seem to have come through unscathed. And now it's D-Day. How much weight have they lost? Angelica's thrilled with the results of the cabbage soup diet. Hey, hi! Those who recommend the diet suggest you only do it for a week, but Angelica's been on it for five weeks on and off. She should now be reverting to a healthy eating plan. She's pinning all her modelling hopes on the diet. Is it delivering for her? I am down to... 11 stone, 12 pounds, with a total loss of two stone. Cambridge Weight Plan HQ wouldn't let Nicola keep exercising on less than a thousand calories a day, so she decided to go her own way. It's been a tough emotional experience. Has she lost enough weight to make it all worthwhile? I'm now down to 17 stone two, which is a loss of 29 pounds. And I'm really happy. Jackie's two-week maple syrup diet's done and dusted. <laughs> but has the short, sharp shock delivered the weight loss she was after? I'm now down to 14 stone, two pounds, which is a loss of 13 pounds. <laughs> which diet was the crashiest? Nicola lost 3.6 pounds per week. 
Angelica lost £5.6 per week and Jackie lost £6.5 per week. But what are the pros and cons? Jackie's a big fan of the maple syrup diet. It claims to detox the body while offering fast weight loss. However, potential side effects of this sugary concoction can include a furry tongue, bad breath, chronic diarrhea, dizziness and fainting. Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm very pleased. I mean, yeah, there's still, there's still room for improvement, but I'm happy with it. I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm back in the dress because I wasn't wearing this dress at least a month ago. I wasn't wearing this dress. Despite her emotional ups and downs, Nicola did lose weight on the Cambridge weight plan. It's straightforward to follow because all you have to do is stick to the low calorie meal replacements. And it claims to have the right levels of vitamins to maintain good health. However, the potential side effects of very low calorie consumption can include bad breath, diarrhea, hair loss, and it can even cause periods to stop. You've seen my before, this is my now. I've lost 29 pounds and I'm really happy. The cabbage soup diet did the trick for Angelica. It delivers fast weight loss and the high fibre keeps you feeling full. However, the potential side effects can include lightheadedness, bloating, nausea and flatulence. Look at me. I'm getting me back. What more can I say? Your crash diet won't kill you if you stick to my three golden rules. Number one, consult your GP. Number two, stick to the plan and don't crash diet for too long. And number three, make sure you eat healthily when you come off the diet. Next time, more of your crash diet confessions. I ate about 30 eggs in uh, three days. I've lost seven stone in a year and a half. This is one of my old jumpers. We look at lighter life, the Ducan diet and a juice diet. But, uh, uh, I'm morbidly obese. Once when I had a Chinese meal, I had to uh, wear a nappy. I'm happy with this. And I am more. And we find out what happens when crash dieting gets competitive. You only need to lose about 10 pounds. I need to lose about two stone, which is a lot more. Mm. Mm. Fatty. Mm. <laughs> fatty, fatty, bum, bum.